Mr. Ford presents most excellent PowerPoint tips. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's class, most excellent PowerPoint tips. My name, of course, is Scott Ford, and welcome. This video is going to answer the question for Ashley out in Virginia, which wanted to know how to make a hypertext presentation. Now, before we begin, let's actually take a look at what we mean by a hypertext presentation. I'm going to launch the PowerPoint, and you'll notice as I'm clicking on the slide, nothing seems to be happening. So I'm going to click here, which says click the start. Now watch my cursor. It turns into that hand again, and I click start, and I'm presented with some problems. One plus one is what? Why? It's three. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Click here to try again. Click there. It is five. No, I'm wrong again. Let's try this again. It's two. Hey, I got it right. Okay, now I'm going to try the next question. Answer this question. Answer this problem. Two plus two is what? So you get an idea of what's going on there. It's really a self-guided lesson. Now, there's some good and bad about creating a hypertext presentation. The bad part, let's cover the bad part first. The bad part is it's very time-consuming to create. There's a lot of front-loading. I've created three problems, as you can see, that students are going to have to answer. And it gets very complicated very quickly. So, for example, let's take a look here at what's underneath the hood, what's behind the curtain. For these three problems, I have six additional slides. If you create a more involved hypertext presentation, things can get very complicated very fast. And you're going to have to plan this stuff out ahead of time. In fact, I had to do a presentation when I was working on my master's, and I had to do a flow chart to keep track of all of the different slides and the different possibilities of where students are going to go. And even if you do all that, you're still going to have problems. You're still going to have to beta test it beforehand. So with all of these problems, why would anybody want to do this? Because it's self-guided. Because once you've created it, you can give it to students and students can work at their own pace. If you happen to have Moodle or some other LMS at your school, you can put this online and students can work again at their own pace, which frees the teacher up to do other things. So let me show you what's kind of going on here. If you have seen the video on how to put video into your PowerPoint, how to link YouTube videos into your PowerPoint, then that's really as technical as this gets because all of these things are just links. So I click on this bar here. I click on the box. I go to insert. I go to actions. And all I'm doing is linking. All it's, that's it. I'm just linking from one slide to another slide. So let's take a look at this. What does it look like? When I click play, boom. So when I click on this again, let's go to actions, hyperlink to, and I select the slide. So I want the very first slide in this problem set. So answer the problem. There it is. Click OK and click OK. Now that is linked to this very first question. I can also, and you might have noticed the cursor went from a cursor to a hand, this little button right here from mouse over to highlight when mouse over, that will change what happens when you mouse over the object. Don't worry, by the way, if you get lost during this presentation, we're going to sum everything up by actually adding slides to this presentation. So this is going to be a longer than normal presentation. And don't worry if you get lost a little bit on the way. I'm going to sum everything up at the end. So the next question, or the very first question in the problem set, was 1 plus 1. This is a normal PowerPoint slide. And I created boxes. I created shapes. If I go to shapes, make a box like that. I did shape fill, no fill shape outline and you can play with your outlines there I selected the box and that is where I did the insert and actions and that's where I did the hyperlinks I can go to the first slide I can go to the last slide I can go to a custom show I'm clicking here for slides to pick the specific slide that I want So really, all this is is you're making a normal PowerPoint and you're doing hyperlinks and you have to keep track 
of where you're going. So for example, one plus one, here's the box, action, this goes to correct. This goes to the first box down here that is correct. So this slide, when you answer correctly, goes to this slide once it's correct. This box goes to the second question in the set. Now, I'm not practicing very good uh, record keeping as far as which slide is which. And I'm going to show you how to solve that in just a second. When you're doing a small presentation, you don't really have to worry about it as much. But as you can see with just three problems, I'm starting to get to the point where I need to start labeling things. So here is question two. Here is question three. Question three we're going to do together. I've already created the slide. I've already drawn the boxes, but that is it. There is no links in this slide. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find my answer. First of all, it's 5 plus 2. 7. So this is going to be the correct answer. I have down here the slide for the correct answer. Again, this is just a slide. There's nothing fancy about it. I've highlighted the answer, and that's all. So here is the question, 5 plus 7, or excuse me, 5 plus 2 is what? The answer is 7. I'm going to click on the box. I'm going to go to Insert and Action. I'm going to go to Hyperlink 2. I'm going to pick the slide. So I'm going to go to Slide. And there's the answer choice. It gives me a little preview window of which one I want. Now, as you can see, I made a mistake in there. So let me go back and fix that. That shouldn't be 2 plus 2. That should be 2 plus 5. Let's go back up here. Go to Action. Hyperlink 2. Slide. 2 plus 5 is 7. Click OK. I want to get that nice little effect of the cursor turning into a hand. Mouse over, highlight, click OK. Let me check what I've got done so far. Be methodical when you make these. Boom, there's the hand. Nothing else is live, nothing else is linked. There we go, let's make sure it works. Boom, there we go. Nothing else is live here or that shouldn't be live. Okay. Again, you want to be methodical. Don't just boom all the rest of these. Don't do them all. Do one at a time. Keep track of what you're doing. Now, 6, 5, and 4 are incorrect answers. So I'm going to highlight this box. I'm going to go to Action. I'm going to go to Hyperlink. And I'm going to go to Slide. And I want the wrong answer for 2 plus 5. Now, notice how come I've got this in there. I'm going to show you. This is a little trick. Mouse over. Highlight when mouse goes over there. Scroll down to my incorrect areas and I create sections for the right answers and sections for the wrong answers. Notice I have this up here. This is wrong 2 plus 5. When you're linking to other slides, it's picking up, when you look at your slide layouts, it's picking up the title of that slide. That's what it's linking to. That's what shows up in the link area, the title of the slide. I don't want this showing when the students take it. So here's a little trick. I'm going to highlight the text. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick the same color that my background is. And now the text disappears. The text is still there. See, the text is still there, but it blends into the background. Nobody can see it, but it still shows up when I click on the box and I go to Action Setting, and I go to Hyperlink 2, and I go to Slide, and it still shows up, but it's hidden from the viewer. So I'm going to finish this off, Highlight, click that, go to Insert, go to Actions, Hyperlink 2, Slide, Wrong, Boom, and Boom. This slide right here is done. This slide has all the information that it needs to have as far as links go. Let's double check this. 2 plus 5, that's the right answer. Good job. 
scroll back up to six. Wrong answer. Again, this is tedious, but you want to make sure all your links work before you move on. And they're all going to the right place. It says, sorry, click here to try again. Now I need to make this a link because I need to go back to that original question. So I'm going to go to action, hyperlink to, slide, answer the problem. I want the mouse cursor to change. Let me double check. Let me save. I must save often here. You don't want to lose all this work. Now this should work. This should be fine. When I click the wrong answer, it should take me there. When I click back, it should take me back to the same question. I'm going to do this for every answer choice. Okay, Do it for everyone to make sure they all work. And that was the right answer, and it should take me back here. Good. Okay, so this is working. This slide's working, this slide's working, this slide's working, and this slide's working. This is working, this is working. What this does, okay, is when I have this selected, one plus one is two, it gives me the right answer. I'm gonna try the next one, it takes me to the next question in the set. I'm gonna answer four, take me to the next one, it takes me there. Now I need to end the lesson. So what I'm going to do here is I click there, I go to actions, I'm going to click on hyperlink and you can, as you see, it's already been selected. But when you have that hyperlink, you have other choices. You can go previous slide, first slide, et cetera, et cetera. End show is what you want. You're going to click end show. I like the highlighter. I like it to be um, changed when you highlight over it, click okay. And that will end the show. So let's double check this before we before we continue. Let's make sure we got everything the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to click start, answer the problem. I'm going to answer them wrong. Try it again. Start, answer the problem. Again, we're double checking everything. One plus one is two. There we go. Okay, this is working. Try the next one. Two plus two. Nope. And you're answering them wrong. You want to go through every possible slide you have to choose from. There we go. Next one. We have one more thing that we need to do in order to make sure our presentation is being displayed correctly. You've spent all this time to ensure that your links are working. You link to one slide, back to another, all this good stuff. We don't want the user to just be able to click through this PowerPoint like a normal PowerPoint. And so in order to do that, I am going to make two quick setting adjustments. I first want to get into this view, the slide sorter view. I want to highlight all of the view, all of the slides. I want to go to transitions. And right up here, this is normally clicked. I want to make sure it's not clicked. I want to make sure there's no check mark here. And again, by default, there's a check mark there. This allows the slides to move by mouse clicks. We don't want that checked, and I'm going to apply it to all. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to Slideshow, and I'm going to change the type of show it is. I'm going to go to Setup Slideshow, and I'm going to Kiosk Full Screen. What this does is it does two things. By me setting those two settings, I'm clicking on the slide right now. It's not moving until I click on the hyperlinks. Also, I am now pushing the arrow buttons and I'm still not progressing from slide to slide. So it ensures that people are not maneuvering around your PowerPoint unless they're clicking on what you want them to click. Now, you still can hit the escape button and escape out of that, and the only way to prevent that from happening is by hiding the keyboard, which can be a little extreme. But now you know how to set up the show. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about PowerPoint, please be sure to email me at mrford at mrfordsclass.net. And I would greatly appreciate it if you enjoy these videos and making it so I can keep them for free by subscribing to my YouTube channel, either my main channel at Mr. Ford's Class 
or if you just want technology videos, subscribe to YouTube Mr. Ford's Technology. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com Mr. Ford's Class Learning. Until next time, have a great day and thank you for watching.